I love to write short stories. I went to graduate school thinking I was a novelist and I graduated and discovered that the short story after I had my son was the length of my attention span. Hmm. <laughs> and, uh, and I am not the original person to have said that, Alice Munro said it and I stole it. Um, because it's true. And I got addicted. You know, I love the short story form. It's a wonderful form. I do, do work on novels, but I keep getting drawn back into short stories. They're really, if you're stuck on one one day, you got five others you can go to and say, eeny, meeny, miny, mo, and just pick one to work on. Um, so it's a, it's a really wonderful form, and I really enjoy it. Uh, this one, ooh, glasses, I can't see a damn thing. Uh, this one is called Dress Shoes. And I'm not gonna, I'm, I write long. That's why everyone always thought I was gonna be a novelist, because I write long. So I'm gonna read you the first few scenes of Dress Shoes. These days, when she's not helping Ralph prepare to live as a woman, Elfie devotes herself to their pet sitting business. Today they're walking a nervous dachshund while shoe shopping for Ralph. The dog whines when Elkie ties him to a parking meter by a Rodeo Drive shoe store. Ralph pats the dog's head and says, you just chew the merchandise. <laughs> Inside the store, Elkie looks for flats or something with a chunky blunt heel that won't add much height. What tall girls like her are supposed to wear. Ralph has other ideas. She watches him collect strappy stilettos, his shaved head gleaming in the bright lights. Tattoos creep out of his collar and cover his lean muscled arms like sleeves. Even his knuckles are inked. Like her, he towers over the other shoppers, well-dressed Beverly Hills ladies who lunch, a separate species from Ralph and Elkie. He walks over to show her some high-heeled sandals that look fragile in his big, bony hand. What? He says when she frowns. They're perfect for my halter dress. I don't want your ugly toenails, she says. Outside, the dogs start yipping. Ralph abandons the sandals, they hurry out. The dachshund has wrapped his leash around the meter and trapped himself next to a pile of poop. A woman with a crepey neck and a tightly smooth face stands looking at him. You're in a pickle, Elkie tells the dog as she untangles him. The woman pretends to window shop while shooting them disapproving glances. Ralph grins. More of a poople, he says. <laughs> Elkie hands him the leash. Potty humor won't fly once you're a girl. The woman turns to stare. Her raised eyebrows barely crease her forehead. Clean up after your dog, she says, and walks off, her swirly skirt twitching. Botoxilla should decrease her dosage, Elkie says. Ralph's smile is tense as he bags the poop. Nothing wrong with self-improvement. He checks his watch and tugs the dog's leash. Move it, buddy. We're running late. They're due soon at an appointment with a dermatologist who specializes in transsexuals. The doctor will decide whether to remove Ralph's beard with laser treatments or with electrolysis, a more painful, time-intensive process. Ralph is impatient to begin. The sooner his beard is gone, the sooner he can start living as a woman, which he must do for a year before surgery. Elkie is trying to be a good sport. They've already bought him a wig to wear while hair grows, along with a closet full of clothes, mostly casual stuff, good for dealing with pets. She even made him a pair of her signature jeans trimmed with colorful silk. Last week, she helped him file a petition to change his name to Ruth. A six foot three woman covered in tattoos would be flamboyant enough, he said, when she asked why such a plain name. It's reality, not the flamboyance that he's after. The dog soon makes him chase them around the apartment before they finally get him locked back in the kitchen. By the time they arrive at the doctor's office, they're 10 minutes late and Ralph is sweaty with stress. When the nurse calls his name, he offers his clammy, stubbled cheek to Elkie. Kiss it goodbye, he says. She kisses him, then makes a show of crossing her fingers and legs. Everything's crossed. The interior door shuts behind him. Elkie pulls her laptop from her messenger bag and tries not to stare at the patients crowding in the waiting room. This world is new to her. 
Ralph only recently revealed his plans to become a woman. She types away on billing statements, but can't help glancing around. Across from her sits a businessman with a narrow chin and soft brow line. Possible signs, Ralph has explained, of an FTM, a biological woman who's undergone surgery and hormone therapy to create masculine appearance. A petite woman by the door has a faint five o'clock shadow, but otherwise is more feminine than Elkie, who is just over six feet tall and as leanly angular as a boy. Elkie is more likely to be mistaken for a transsexual than this woman. Maybe someone here has already made that mistake. Elkie disdains makeup, keeps her dark hair short and, sp and spiky, wears t-shirts and colorfully patched jeans that hug her muscular ass. The woman by the door has long blonde curls and shapely curves, accentuated by her filmy sundress, a French pedicure displayed in slender thong and sandals. Exactly Ralph's type. Transitioning won't change his attraction to women. He's always loved women. Just not Elkie, not in that way. And she's fine with that. The woman with the pretty feet looks at Elkie. Can I help you? She said in a husky, calm voice. Uh, I was just admiring your dress, Elkie stammers. The woman touches her skirt. Neem and sail, she says, and keeps reading her magazine. It's a relief when Ralph returns. There's a small gauze square taped under his left ear. How'd it go? Elkie asks as she puts away her laptop, but he's already noticed the blonde by the door. He flushes a deep crimson, the way he always does around women, and keeps walking to the exit. As they leave, the blonde glances up and then away, convinced, Elkie is certain, that Ralph is just some guy looking to get a tattoo removed. Convinced that someone who looks like him was nothing more than that. Ralph and Elkie make a good team. He's the animal person, she's the administrator. Clients love her itemized statements, complete with dates and times of walks and feedings. There's also the website to update and flyers to post at every vet clinic, rec center, and coffee shop within five miles of the rental house she shares with Ralph. The tiny dilapidated flat roof ranch is in little Osaka near Sautel and Olympic, sandwiched between two Japanese plant nurseries. On warm mornings, she wakes to the sugary scent of jasmine and the quiet hiss of overhead sprinklers misting the plants next door. They rented the house for its central location, which allows them to service much of West LA. Plus, there are three narrow bedrooms, a bedroom each plus an office, and two bathrooms, one which is closet size, but still, they'll finally have some privacy, Ralph noted when they moved in. At the time, she thought he was joking. They'd been best friends for 10 years since seventh grade and had lived together since high school after he got kicked out of his house. They share everything. That's what she thought anyway. In the car, he removes the gauze from under his ear. A dime-sized spot is swollen and prickly pink. Elkie takes one hand off the steering wheel to touch it. It's a test run, he explains. Lasers can burn all of skin, but my dark hair should attract the laser away from it. We'll see what happens with this spot. He rubs his colorful forearms. Lasers ruin tattoos, though, so I'm stuck with electrolysis everywhere else, but once the beard's gone, people can start calling me she. Ellie navigates the car around the bus. Don't you want to be on hormones first? It'd be easier to pass. Who knows when I can get him, he says. For a hormone prescription, Ralph needs a therapist's letter stating he's ready to transition. Hormones will thin his skin and body hair, soften his facial features, help him grow breasts, redistribute his weight. But because he's young, only 22, his therapist wants him to wait a few more months <coughs> to make sure he's committed to the process. Which he is. Each night he combs his ash blonde wig as gently as if it's attached to someone's head. It costs a fortune, but it's real human hair with a honeyed natural sheen. Lucky hasn't had the heart to tell him that it doesn't come close to transforming him. He just looks like a guy in a wig. <laughs> he digs under the seat for his work cap with the little green logo. He's got a late afternoon shift at the coffee house, his second job, which means she's stuck again doing most of the evening rounds alone. 
and she can't complain. He's saving every penny. Hormone therapy is expensive, as is surgery. Plus the name change, the new wardrobe, the hair removal. Everything adds up. I'll walk the Baron's poodles while you're working, she says, watching the room. But that Harper beast is yours. Butchie, he says. He's a sweetheart with the biggest teeth ever, she says. He's dying to get me alone and bite my ass. As she pulls over at the coffee house, she pictures Ralph wearing pumps in his wig while he walks Butchie, a bulky pit shepherd mix. People would stare open mouthed. Butchie might even turn on him, knock him down and rip apart the wig. Maybe you're going too fast, she says. You don't have to transition overnight. He kisses her cheek. You worry too much. Then he's out the door, running into the coffee house, not looking back. Ralph got his first hat at 15, a purple orchid enmeshed in foliage that wrapped around his left calf. Alki drove him to a tattoo parlor, a quiet, clean place near school that she'd checked out beforehand, and helped him choose the design. She was in the same grade, though older by a year and only a little shorter. Six feet tall and as skinny as a rake. Girls at school whispered about her behind her hands. The boys called her names outright. Amazon, Sasquatch, Stretch. She became clean of the nasty retort, which didn't help. Neither did her clothes, they never fit. Shirts, span, shirts that spanned her shoulders were baggy enough for two of her. The right leg of pants sagged around her waist. There was no money for alterations. She and her mother scraped by on her mom's teacher's salary and whatever Elkie made was an odd jobs after school. So she learned to sew, to tailor her shirts, hem her jeans with colorful remnants rescued from fabric store remainder bins. Never dresses her skirts though. Nothing that might call more attention to her body, that freakish traitor that wouldn't stop growing. She didn't know Ralph's secret the day they went for his first tattoo. She thought it was just something guys did when they were too shy to attract girls' attention otherwise. He hadn't quite reached his full height, but he was thinner than she was, with oversized pants and a long stork of a neck, his thick, dark hair falling into his face. But he wasn't someone people stared at. There was a calmness about him that deflected attention. Being with him quelled the angry, angry turmoil in Elkie's head. She forgot what she looked like, the cat calls and stares. They're idiots, you know that, right? Was all he needed to say to flood her with a steady, easy quiet. It'll give people a reason to look at you, she warned that day in the tattoo parlor as they examined the design stencils hanging on the wall. It'll be beautiful, he said. I want something beautiful. Then he sat in an old dentist chair with squeaky hydraulics and held her hand as the tattoo artist cleaned and shaved his calf, transferred the design to the hairless spot. Once the needles and the ink started, Elkie was surprised at how peaceful Ralph looked, despite an occasional wince. He told her years later when he finally confessed that the pain didn't matter. Getting that first tra tattoo felt transformative in life. Each needle hints a promise that change was possible, that somehow he could match his inside self, a self that cringed whenever he passed a mirror. He had always known, he said when he finally told her. He wasn't supposed to be a man, no matter what his body looked like. And many, many thanks to Mandy.